Today we're going to have a look at moments, more about moments. We're going to look at some different types of levers. We'll look at some different types of levers. We'll look at the three lever classes. We'll look at how they work. We'll look at moments and force times distance. Let's have a look. To start with then, levers. There are three basic lever classes that we we come across. They are obviously called the class one, class two, and class three levers. Let's look at a class one lever and see what we can find out about this. Now, a class one lever consists of a fulcrum, a point in the middle and what we have is a load on this side and we have some sort of effort on this side. The effort is going to push down and the load is going to come up. So the sort of things that we would see this lever being is sort of perhaps something like a pair of scissors. So let's go and have a look at some of these levers. Let me move some bits and pieces out of the way. And here are our scissors basically designed to try and cut something and I've got here a piece of cord that I that frightened me that I need to cut now if I want to cut this then let's try snipping this at the very end really not working let's bring this so the piece of string is nearer the fulcrum and it cuts then really quite easy my hard bits to stop the string moving along but it does cut it cuts much better at this point than it will do when it's further away. Here I'm providing the effort and here we're getting our load. And as I move it further away, as we saw last time, the, lo e the force decreases. So it gradually gets more and more difficult to cut at the end of the scissors, much easier to cut at this end. So there is really a simple class one lever. The next one. Some people would actually term the scissors as a double class one lever and that's that's quite fair enough to try and describe it in that way. Let's look at a class two lever. A class two lever we have the fulcrum at the end we have our load here and we've got our effort here. Now basically in a class 2 lever I wasn't showing you the picture we've got 
a different sort of system and this is very similar really to a wheelbarrow and I didn't really have a wheelbarrow that I could actually bring in to try and show you but we'll we'll see what we can do about showing you this in a minute so we've got this class 2 lever and the typical one that I would actually see this is typically the wheelbarrow and the wheelbarrow you lift this bit and there's the load and there's the wheel which is the fulcrum so we've got that sort of idea very simple things also can be nutcrackers a nutcracker and I didn't have any nutcrackers we have the fulcrum we have the nut and then we have our effort we're going to put down here to try and crack the nut and that way they're actually moving here in opposite directions my last type here is a class 3 lever and in my class 3 lever it looks very much like a class 2 lever in that we have the fulcrum here but we have the effort supplied in the middle and we have our load here at the end so it's sort of a basically a, a system here to try and do this uh, this basically is something like a stapler and I've got my fulcrum here at this end and I've got my effort where I'm going to push down here in the middle and we've got the business end where it's going to do some work another way of looking at that one would be my pair of tweezers here I have the fulcrum where I place the effort and where we're getting the load done and yeah my grab them out they're a bit dirty so there is a class 3 lever so examples of each of these a class 1 lever things like scissors class 2 lever a nutcracker or wheelbarrow and class 3 lever stapler or tweezers so we've got different sorts of machines here which is what these basically are to enable us to do work in an easier way and we can think of some of these as we look at what we're going to try and do when we try virtually all of these machines however we have to think about these things called moments the moment here this is our force which we're going to measure in newtons here the result of what we're actually doing so this is measured in newton meters 
we've got our force times our distance. And we can see all this going on. And this is our perpendicular distance here from, typically, our fulcrum. Let's have a look at some of these. It's a lot easier when we have a look at some of them. So we can look at a variety of different bits of equipment. Here we can look at a claw hammer. I've had a nail here. So this is where my load is. And then we've got the pivot here in the middle. And we've got where the force is being applied to try and pull my nail, nail out. What type of lever do you think that is? We see the same with the scissors, that we've got the force here, we've got the fulcrum, the pivot point in the middle, and I'll load the other side. If I've got a spanner to try and open something up, then here I've got my load, I've got my pivot, and I've got my force. If I swap that one for a bigger one, you can see a subtle difference in the size, then what we've got again the same shape but because we've got a much longer length here we can get more force because the amount of effort I'm putting on here in Newton meters is my force here and my distance and if I make the distance longer then I can increase the amount of moment, the Newton meters here. So I can open this much easier than I can with this one because it's got much smaller sort of perpendicular distance. We can look at this also with a simple idea of a seesaw. So if I take my seesaw, and this is a very simple seesaw, what we've got is a pivot point, and I've got a pivot point that I can actually adjust here. It's very simple, we'll turn it round so you can see. We've got simply a point with lots of Lego here with holes and I can put this in and if I put it in the right place it's very very sensitive it should just about balance now if we put on an equal weight then so just one on that so it's going to go down that way if I put an equal mass on there then it's going to balance quite nicely but how about if we've got this as a simple seesaw and what I've got is a little kid but you're the big kid at the other side so let's set this one up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one off and I'm going to put it a lot nearer the fulcrum. And now to balance this I don't require one weight or two weights or three
perhaps I do require about three there I've now got it balancing with three masses here but only one mass on the other side and it's very sensitive here a slight movement and I can tip it in fact either way so what can we do with this simple setup well we can have a look at some different types of levers so let's take this back as it was and I'm just going to put it back with one mass at either end we've got the pivot in the middle now we can see that if we decrease the distance then we need to increase the force to match and this is a simple type of class 1 lever if we swap this around however and I now put this at the other end then if I want to try and use this as a wheelbarrow then what we've got is the fulcrum at that end here's my mass I've got to lift and I have to lift it this way and here obviously we can't balance it but we can measure this if we make a slight adjustment and if I grab here a newton meter then I can use my newton meter to measure my mass and the amount of effort that I have to put in to lift this so if I put in here simply a hundred grams then I've got a different force and if I move this gradually along you can see hopefully that my force will increase so let's do that one again Paul's going to try and concentrate on the Newton meter as I bring it closer here you can see the force is increasing I'll bring it even closer So I'm having to do here close to it it's one just over one Newton worth whereas if I bring it back to the end we can see that we're on less than half a Newton 8.4 so it is working I'm needing to put in less force to try and lift this object so there's our first lever so we can see with this first one we've got simply the fulcrum in the middle and we've got to a force and a load equal there if we move this along then force times distance as we decrease the distance so we need to maintain the force to equal this because the sum of all the forces on this side 
equals the sum of all the forces on that side. We've got going this one going down. It's going around a clock face. So we talk the, as this one as the clockwise motion. And on the other side here it's going in the opposite direction the anti-clockwise motions. And something like this it's a sum of all the different clockwise motions and the anti-clockwise motions and what we can do with some of these we can actually get cleverer that we can actually put not just one force on here and one force there but we can also put a collection of different forces at different distances and the sum of all these forces must equal that one. So this model here describing for us the type 1 and the type 2 levers. A type 3 is harder to try and do with this because what I now need to do with this one is I need to put the load at this end. So if I put on here, I'm going to have to swap these over I think to get the mass on there. I'm going to put 100 grams on there. And if we want to measure our type 3 type lever, I'm going to bring that out, then what I'm going to need to do with this is to measure this one this way. It's going to be more difficult. I'm going to have to cheat. And I'm going to put my locking nut on here trying to stop it coming out and we can measure this force here I'll put it around the other way you might be able to see it so for on this one this lever is not working as well I've got 100 grams at this end and I've got two Newtons here as I bring this closer I just don't think I can do this one I have to hold that down and we can see I need a much larger force I've got to try and anchor the base down as well and as I bring this this way it becomes that I can actually cope with it so as I get nearer and nearer this mass then my force becomes less and less it's still however not necessarily the best type of lever to do some things with. Different levers then have different particular functions and needs. I'll put this one back. there we are it's balancing again so this one is very very sensitive so sensitive that sort of we're, we're looking at only a 10 gram mass here it, it doesn't work but if I take something as simple as a paper clip on this end paper clip is way too much for it and in fact if we go 
less than a paper clip it still upsets it and at the moment I can't see the other little lighting item I, I was going to put on there there we go a small one gram mass and if I put a one gram mass on here then I can't balance it one gram is enough so it's a very crude but a very simple balance so there's our different types of levers and let's go and have a look at a little bit more These are some levers. There are three types of levers and those three types of levers still operate on the same basic principle. But going with levers there's also something called a multiplier. Now a multiplier can be either some things like gears or we can have other things like pulleys. So we've met levers, then we've also got gears and pulleys and these are multipliers. So what exactly is a multiplier? What is it what does it do well let's have a look and see what we can find out with these we'll look at gears in more detail in another lesson but let's have a look at a basic idea of a gear in that this wheel may go around one time but this one might need to go around four times. So here we've got a multiplication effect. For every time the big wheel goes round once, the little one will go round four times. And for the little one, every time it goes round four times, the big one will go round once. And many of you will notice that you can use this on your bicycle the principle of having gears and a chain which is just basically connecting the two gears together rather than having them next to one another all it does it extends the range of this it doesn't change how it works that we can get either a one-to-one -one where you can every time this goes round once that one goes round once and that's for speed but if you want to go up a hill then every time this goes round once then you'd want that to go round much less so if you're going fast once round here that might go around four times but when we're going up a hill then I want this to go round once and that to go four times thinking of this in the other direction the other way well we've got another way we can look at this and that's with some pulleys and I want to just very quickly have a look at some pulleys let's have an idea about some pulleys so what we're going to do is set up a few pulleys and try something out 
so got a, a simple retort stand and I've got here some pulleys and a piece of string right so let's try a really simple pulley to start with and this is just a single pulley and I'm just going to put my string through and I'm going to have my mass now obviously it's going to zip down there so what we're going to do is we're going to make up another one of these and if all goes according to plan then both of these should be the same and it should balance And there they perfectly balance I've got simply the same force going down on one side as is going up on the other now what we could do is we could try to change our pulley system and make it work slightly differently so what would happen if we change our pulleys so instead of having one here what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a double pulley at the top and what we can do is we can hang a mass from this pulley now what we want to do is we want to put in our force it's going to go around this pulley and it's going to go back through this one and these are usually quite fiddly to set up so I'm just going to put a little mass on there and I've got to get all these strings around the pulleys to make them work properly so I'm just going to hold a weight on this one don't really want to use a longer bit of string and right, let's come off let's put that one on there and we've got it back right so I've now got the same masses but at the moment this wants to if I let go of this one it wants to pull it down so I'm going to take off some masses here now I've got just five masses on here so that's 50 grams balancing with one two three four five six seven eight nine I think nine on that one there 
and now I've got this working in a ratio of sort of two to one here so basically I can pull down on this pulley they do just about balance so my effort now for lifting something is minimal this is how often lifts work that you have a lift and it's balanced by a counterweight and here we've got this idea that I can change these things by putting in less effort to lift something because the pulley is doing all the work because to raise this a little bit I'm having to move this one a lot so it's still my force and my distance here I'm moving this a long way to move that just a short distance so we've got this assembly of pulleys that can basically act in the same way as the lever so, so we've looked at then simply some pulleys they act as multipliers in the same way that we can have gears it just doesn't look as easy to sort of follow that we've got one pulley here with a mass attached to it and that string then goes round a pulley round this pulley and around again to a mass and it looks messy when we try and draw this out that's why I tried not to draw it out but show you there so we've got again this idea of wheels axles pulleys so that you can see how they work So we've had a little look at the different types of levers. The class 1, the class 2, the class 3 type levers. We've worked out something about moments. That if I've got a basic seesaw, then it's the force times the distance in the clockwise and that will equal the force times the distance in the anti-clockwise. The sum of the forces here equal those. If we change, we leave this one which is going to be the force times the distance, then if I make the distance much smaller then the force has to become very much larger and if I've got multiple ones then we can work those out so if we want to calculate these very easy to try and do and we can use the different types of levers in different ways so that we can measure all of those out so there we are some ideas about moments for you if you found this useful then please subscribe and give us a thumbs up and I will see you next time on more GCSE physics topic by topic till then stay safe bye bye